Hey everyone, thanks for coming back and hanging out with me. I am Chris, the titular bearded film guy, uh, and I'm here today for my second episode of The Severin Showcase. And this is a series that uh, I started doing last month where pretty much I deep dive into everything Severin, basically every single month. And, uh, and why do I do that? It's a label that I love, a label that I appreciate. It's a label that does great bundles, which allows me to get this stuff uh, pretty quickly and without really, you know, having to track down individual releases and do all this crazy stuff, spend all this money. I mean, it's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But <laughs> it allows me to just kind of make a one-time purchase. I get all the titles and then I'm happy. I get them all together. And, you know, sometimes I get... Get some cool stuff by doing that, you know? Uh, but we're here. This is for the February titles. The March announcements already are, were already announced. Uh, the orders are up for those on the website. Those will be uh, heading out. I think for pre-orders, these typically ship the month after. So March pre-orders will ship the beginning of April. <clears throat> these I received um, like end of first week of March. I got these. Uh, and I dove right in. But a little bit of an interesting month for Severin because for the first time in a long time, this is a bundle of three titles I have never been exposed to previously. Because a lot of times when it comes to uh, Severin releases, you know the movie, you heard of it. You're like, okay, I know what that is. Maybe I've never seen it, but I've heard of it. It's popular in, in a circle. I see people talk about it. I've seen... Um, other labels release it. Maybe I read about it in a book because I'm always reading, always doing all that kind of stuff. So this is the first time in a long time where we had three releases I knew absolutely nothing about. And I did not watch any of the trailers that, that they cut together because um, I didn't want to be spoiled of anything. I didn't want to know anything because one of the reasons I love collecting this label, much like people love collecting any label they love, is the discovery of new things, discovery of genres or expansions on genres that they love and, and being exposed to, to new things and really diving in and learning. And this is a, a cool set of films for a couple of different reasons that I'll dive in. Um, but pretty much what are we going to do here? We're going to dive into these three titles. We're going to look at the packaging. We're going to look at anything extra that's included. We're going to kind of discuss the movies a little bit. Uh, this is kind of meant to be like a deep dive. I would say, into all the titles. That way, if anything that you see on here you're interested in, you can go over to the website and purchase yourself. Um, buy for yourself. Go, hey, man, that sounds right up my alley. You can go over and pick it up. Uh, for me, this is just a great chance to go into these titles as deeply as I can and come out with as much information as possible to appease my sick nerd brain. So, yeah. Let's get into some sickness, by the way. All right, so to dive in, to just kick this off, we have three releases this month, one of which is newer. It actually came out in 2022. Uh, two are Bob Kreese produced R.L. Frost-directed films. This is where I had almost like no previous knowledge at all. Like, I, I know a good amount about exploitation. I, I haven't really, I think, had the opportunity to to, to dive into this side of it. Um, and, of course, I'm talking about the first title here. This is from 1968. This is Hot Spur. So let's check out this packaging. First of all, you have your front cover there. And this is back of the packaging. Sorry, I know the lighting is not ideal not able to read that but i'm gonna go through it for you but this is really cool this is a revenge western exploitation film i guess you could say it as uh this would now be described as a ruffy or was described as a ruffy back then um which i'll throw the definition of ruffy right down here for you guys um this is your disc art just the a pinch of the front cover there and then nothing extra inside of this except when we take out our slipcover on the inside here, we actually have a letter to exhibitors written for when this film came out, including our cast list, our cast and crew list in here. And then we also have the other side of it, which really interesting. So we'll dive into this movie a little bit, but this is a, this is a, a rough movie. This is in no way like what I would consider 
mainstream cinema. You know, when you think 1968, um, 1969, you're not thinking about this film. At least offhand, you're not going to. Uh, but on the inside of the slip, and I'll show you in a second, um, there is a clip or a uh, blurb in here from a... Uh, a review written in the National Review, which claimed that this was one of the, be the top 10 best films of 1969. Uh, and that's the back of the slip here. I'll try to get that to, uh, to fo focus up there. So that's what you have on the inside, which is nice. Uh, really cool. It's just not enough info for a booklet or anything. I'm 100% okay with that. I would rather have something like that on the back of a slip as opposed to, you know, nothing at all. So... Uh, here we go. We'll just snap this back in. And Hotspur, this is a um, a very sleazy revenge western uh, that tells the story of a of um, a small well, small in stature um, of a boy, a man named Carlo, who is seeking out basically revenge after the brutal, brutal rape of his sister. Uh, so where the story picks up, um, he is working at a local, I guess it's like a, I guess it's a bar or a pub. Um, two men come in, there is a, a weird semi like rape scene. Um, he then follows them and discovers that they work for, uh, pretty much the last person he's looking for. He's been tracking down and finding all the people involved in the rape of his sister and killing them. He has one left that is the leader of the group. Uh, and it turns out he thinks he's got him uh, on the trail. So the as far as the revenge western aspect of it all, I think that that's the, the, the finest point of this. Because even in the other film we're going to talk about um, by the same crew, The Scavengers, the action, the Western aspect of it is so well done. It's it's very authentic to me because a lot of times, you know, I, I'm not not to say the action is very dramatized. It obviously is. It has to be to a certain extent. Um, but everything about these films feel authentic to a certain degree. And I think that the action and the actual revenge portion of it um, feels the most authentic. And that's where both of these films shine. Um, there is a a big shootout in the last half hour of this film, or a, a, a build up to a shootout and then a shootout um, that's extraordinarily well done. And along the way, there's plenty of brutality and plenty of sleaze and stuff. Um, this is the first time the film has ever been restored uncensored, and it only runs 85 minutes, so it's a it's a very quick breezy experience. It just flies right through. Um, but yeah, this is a a very called a roughie um it is a, a a tough little experience to get through and and, and i i appreciate exploitation films i liked hotspur uh, but there are some truly i could see where the roughy part really came to define uh this film there's some rough moments there's there is a lot of just <laughs> random nudity nudity that's just focused on heavily um there's some pretty disturbing there's multiple um very odd, very extended, and brutal in a different way. Uh, rape sequences that aren't that that's not like, not like the last house on the left brutality. We're still not to that aspect, but they're just so like it feels like it goes on forever and ever and ever, and it keeps going and it makes you very uncomfortable. Um, but that's the whole point of it, you know, and that's what makes the revenge part of this so satisfying, um, and, and I think it really pays off well. So this was one a film that I liked a lot i didn't totally love it um i don't ever get rid of any movies i keep them until i watch them a couple times and i give them a chance and i think that after my first experience with this a second watch is going to give me a much better uh, appreciation for it this time around uh, but on here we have a couple bonus features uh, there's an audio commentary on this disc with vinegar syndrome's joe rubin um severin films andrew Furtado. And uh, Bob Cressy friend slash something weird or former something weird general manager Tim Lewis. That is on the disc. I'm actually planning on watching that. I don't know, probably within the next couple weeks. I just kind of want to see if I can get a little bit deeper insight, a little bit more of maybe um, other minds um, view on this film that can maybe help me shape and, and kind of form a more concrete opinion on it. 
Uh, but that's on here. There's a recently discovered audio discussion uh, on Fresh Cressy by David F. Friedman and Something Weird founder Mike Verini that runs over the film. I, I went to a couple moments. The, mo- the movie's just kind of playing in the background. It's not directly a commentary. Uh, that runs the length of the movie. It's about 90 minutes long. Um, you have two um, short films on here. Well, you have an early feature called Hollywood's World of Flesh. Um, that is a stripper epic, so enjoy that. Uh, that's 64 minutes, and then there's a uh, another short film called The Casting Director. You have your theatrical trail, and you have a teaser. So there is a pool quote on here that uh, a sleazoid classic. So definitely give this one a chance. Um, it, when I'm when I put them side by side, if I go The Scavengers and Hot Spur, um, I go Hot Spur because of kind of the the lean meanness of it and and the the restoration of this is beautiful like uh, you know to me a good restoration maintains that the the authenticity of the film and 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 really maintains it and there are some beautiful beautiful shots in here the transfers fantastic like i said it's not a 4k it's a blu-ray it looks good enough we don't ever need anything more than what's on here i don't think it'll ever look better the fact that this exists on disc is good enough for me so we have hot spur and then you have another, uh, by the same group here, we have a Cress R.L. Frost production. This is 1969, and this is The Scavengers. Let's check this thing out. So there is your front cover. This little thing up here says, a stark, naked picture that leaves its guts hanging out. So then you have the back of your packaging here. And then on the inside here, because this one was a little heavy, um, there is actually, pop this open. Let me show you off the disc art first, just a compressed version of the art on the front of the disc check that out sorry guys my allergies have been a little a little brutal <laughs> so if i'm if i'm sniffling and doing all that fun stuff it's it's beautiful here i'm in new jersey it's 70 degrees we have the windows open so you know that's kind of what's uh what's going on so on the inside of here when you crack this open there is actually a promotional program replica and i'll show you a couple bits of this this is really cool because if you go over to severin films instagram they showed the full size version of this and how they reproduced that to be small enough to fit inside of your blu-ray case which is awesome and they did a little thing where they kind of went page by page to show exactly how well this was reproduced for this so this is pretty cool this is a little thick booklet and on the inside of here when you crack it open so here's your front uh cover of the booklet there. Absolutely love these little press junkets and programs. So got that going on. This is called Our Family Album. And when you flip it open, you have uh, cast and crew on the side as well as information on the title song, which is a banger, by the way. The, the title song for this movie that was made for this movie is awesome. And then on the other page, we have a special note to all exhibitors. And this is really interesting because this pretty much goes through how much promo work um, the production company was already supplying exhibitors because typically um, I think when movies maybe not anymore maybe maybe to a certain extent but um, typically uh, exhibitors would have to would have to purchase promotional material to to draw more people into a theater to see a specific movie so if they said hey we're going to show this film um, and then they don't buy any promotional material, whether it be posters or standees or whatever else was going on. Um, you know, maybe not might have you might not have as many people showing up to the theater, to your theater, to see the movie. Um, so in here, they talk about how they sent um, two press sheets. Um, they gave them a five-minute-long trailer. Um, let's see. They gave them a trailer for a limited amount of time. So they can play the trailer for six, seven, eight weeks, but only be charged for four weeks rental. Um, they sent them the theme song for this on disc as well as tapes. And it's available absolutely free to play during intermission or in the lobby to build engagement. Um, they also said that records can be distributed to local DJs. So they did a lot of work for distributors to promote this movie and get this movie out there and draw people in to see it at their individual theaters which is really cool and then the rest of this is basically you have your plot in here and then as you go through there's just a bunch of really cool promo images and stuff throughout throughout the whole booklet in here it's a lot of stuff in here i cannot show um just a bunch of stills and little captions on it i wonder yeah i can't show any of that nope (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, nope. Uh, this is uh, what, just the last page there. But really cool. Um, most interesting was this letter, uh, the special news to all exhibitors. I, I love this kind of stuff. So really cool effort from Severin putting uh, this reproduction involved in here. And then actually on the back of the slip, so if we crack this open here, again, just like Hotspur, we do not have reversible art, but we have this. Um, and this looks like this is a, um, let's see. Uh, this is like a note to uh, the public, to the adult public. Um, pretty much talking about uh, Lee Frost, um, giving some information on the film. Um, there's a great note in here that I love and as under any condition do not see the scavengers if you're looking for a family film brilliant or blatantly violent topically Freudian shockingly intimate but above all he is endowed with a consummate filmmaking talent discover it, you'll be generally surprised and then we have a uh, a um, advertisement on here as well so super cool a ton of work going into these and the scavengers well this is a film that tells the story of um of a renegade, uh, a renegade Confederate troop who plans to um, intersect a a um, a bunch of gold that's being traveled, a bunch of gold, a bunch of money, and um, pretty much they hold up in this town waiting for this uh, troop to come through who's going to be having all this money, all this gold, and they're going to rob them blind. Um, and in the process, you have tons and tons of racism, tons of um, defilement some rape you know all the typical stuff that you're gonna get um but the one thing i will say about this movie is this movie's a lot less okay i think this is a better made film than hot spur right because you can see that there was a little bit of a a little bit of a of a of a shift in the style right the scavengers this is um the unrated version as well as the R-rated version, both fully restored for the first time ever. The unrated version is 104 minutes. Of course, that's a version that I watched. Um, there was a lot of the, a lot of the 10 extra minutes was um, most of the erotic scenes, most of that stuff kind of being added back in. And you can kind of see that because again, um, some of those scenes just go on for so long, like they drag out. But the actual plot, the characters, I was much, much, much more engaged with with the scavengers. Um, I found myself much more involved in what was going on. And again, the action was very authentic. Um, everything felt good. This movie looks fantastic. Um, I, I loved pretty much, I loved how mean this movie was. Um, there's something to, um, <laughs> something to, just this time period and its lack of sensitivity for storytelling. It, it's just such a such a crazy experience when you sit down and watch. Um, and when it was all over, I remember kind of thinking like, okay, so better made than Hotspur, better story than Hotspur, I think. Okay, not a better story. It's a different, it's a different type of story. While I love a lean, mean, revenge uh, film, I also love um, something a little more involved something a little more chaotic and i think that um i think that uh the scavengers is a much more chaotic film but um i i i i like i think if i'm just going to if if i'm in a random mood i'm having some drinks on a wednesday night i think i'm going to throw in hot spur over scavengers um but both of them I, I pretty much put equal i think hot spur edges it out a little bit just for me um but if you're really looking for that 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 really dirty gritty violent raw experience i think the scavengers um, will fit i think hotspur fits perfectly i think this is a great if you could pull off a double feature of the two of these one night have a couple drinks throw both of these on um you're gonna have a hell of a time and in here we don't have as many bonus features we have um audio commentary with vinegar syndrome's joe rubin severin films andrew Furtado, and temple of shocks chris Pagiali. that's on the unrated version only of the film uh, the Gatsco trailer, there's actually two trailers on here. One is the hot version and then the program replica. So uh, again, I want to sit down and explore both of these again with the commentaries. Kind of see if I can... I think that movies like this, more so than just like a horror or horror-based exploitation, um, 
they they take a little bit more than just like oh I sat down and I watched it I'm good and I know that that's that's what I do when I come on here on talk and I talk about it but at the same time too like I'm going to dive into these much further over the next couple of weeks before I get my next release and um, I kind of want to do a video solely on both of these and kind of talk about my experience with the commentary and stuff like that so we have Hotspur and the Scavengers so on to something a little cleaner and the final. Uh, film from Severin this month. We have from 2022, we have Lola. So there is your front cover. Here is the back. And then on the inside, we have nothing on the back sleeve. Here is your disc art. Let's see. Come on. There we go. So we have your disc art. Knew nothing about this. And it was, I actually loved listening to the. Severin podcast when I before I placed my order um, about this film because I'm pretty sure David Gregory, one of the co-founders, uh, saw this at a festival and and that's how Severin secured this for the North American disc premiere. I think this had a this had a release overseas. I forget where exactly, um, but this is the North American premiere disc of it, and I knew nothing i'm unfamiliar with with the director i'm unfamiliar with the cast i'm unfamiliar with everything about this movie so i went in a hundred percent as blind as i possibly could and pretty much what we have here is we have a found footage film about um two girls their sisters who um one of the sisters builds a a machine that allows them to intercept broadcasts from the past and the future um, and pretty much this takes place in 1941, right? Yeah, 1941. Um, the machine is called Lola based off of uh, their mother, in, in memory of their mother. Um, and as they kind of discover and play with Lola, they begin to kind of change and shape the direction that of World War II. Basically, they're able to uh, listen to broadcasts from the future about when attacks are going to be. Um, the military then gets involved, not by them. They they start broadcasting and doing warnings, um, just kind of like on their own. And then the military tracks them down, and the military's like, hey, we could really use this. And um, yeah, they kind of start to change the direction of World War II. Um, and of course, as the film, as you would know, it, it starts going wrong, and things go really, really bad <laughs> for them. Uh, and it's really cool because this is a like a, a pseudo found footage film. Um, so the actual movie that we're seeing is a film put together by the sister um, who intends on, I guess, kind of sending it back in time and hoping that her sister is able to see this and therefore not do what what led to the events of the movie. Um, and it's really cool because this is a mix of kind of... You have found footage. It looks great. It's all in black and white. It's it's shot very very old school. It's beautiful, like just absolutely beautiful. Uh, I love old black and white film. This looks incredible. It doesn't it it, it doesn't go as far um, uh, in the behind the scenes they were talking about. It doesn't they didn't want to go as far as like being extraordinarily authentic because um, that look is a little tough. But they kind of found a good happy medium. Uh, there and and um, the movie's wonderful to look at. I really love the characters. I love the sisters. Um, I love um, uh, the love interest for one of the sisters who who's part of the military. Um, and I found myself really really engrossed in this film the whole entire time. I mean, it's only seventy nine minutes in length, um, so it moves really fast. But it's it sucks you in and it really keeps you involved every single minute up until the end. And I'm not a found footage guy. Like, I give most of them a chance. I think, for the most part, it's a genre that's outside of some of the most well-known. I think it's 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 very rinse, wash, repeat because you can you can achieve it on a low budget. Nobody ever really puts um, too many risks into them because um, you know. Uh, you can kind of do the same thing over and over again and find success and that allows you to break through and, and do, you know, the Hollywood thing. So I feel like a lot of filmmakers um, don't really go all out. And the ones that do are the ones that we that we know um, and that we love. This one goes all out. This one stands out. Um, this is such an 
a, a departure for Severn that I welcome so much. Because you got to think of my delivery. We have two super, super sleazy, super offensive uh, revenge westerns who defined a subgenre of exploitation, right? With the two of these. Um, you're not going to, like, these aren't, uh, I mean, I had a blast watching, but they're not fun. They're not really meant to be fun. They're brutal. They're rough. Um, and then you have this pretty much totally unviolent, unoffensive um, story of time travel. There is very little actual on-screen violence. There's no nudity. There's none of the excess that we come to expect from Severin as a label. But such a great goddamn film. I mean, in every single way. It's such a great movie. I had a, a ton of fun with this to the point where I kind of wish this was a bigger budget film and they were able to expand on it because um, there's great, was low budget, but there's great visual effects in here. There's great use of um, old film and kind of reshaping it through visual effects to to match the story and, and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's very... Forrest Gump and Ed style of like, hey, here's old footage, but we're we're we're, we're going to change it around through visual effects um, for it to match our story and what what we're trying to tell. So tons of great stuff here. Um, this is such a good disc. You have on here an audio commentary with the co-writer, director, as well as the producer. There's about a five minute um, making of. There's an outtake on here, and then there's two short films by the director. One from 2012, the other one from 2005. So Lola was such a great, such a great experience. I know that right now this is streaming on Tubi. It's also streaming on Peacock, I think, because I text my brother, who's a giant sci-fi nerd. I was like, dude, you gotta check this out. This is right up his alley. Um, so I sent it to him. So yeah, I think at this moment, streaming on Peacock, streaming on Tubi, I highly suggest that you check this out and pick up this disc, great disc. If you are a sci-fi fan, if you are a found footage fan, this is such a good find, such a good find, and a great disc premiere from Severin Films. So that's that, guys. Such a great month from Severin. Again, just a quick recap. We have Hot Spur, a nasty little sleazy revenge western. We have The Scavengers, another sleazy, uh, very mean revenge film. And then we have brand new 2022 time travel with Lola. So such a fantastic start to the year. I mean, we went over... The January releases last month, all of those were great. We had a great 4K North American premiere. And then I'm super insanely excited for, for March release. I already ordered the bundle, it was limited to 300. Um, we have Kathy's Curse on 4K, Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker on 4K, The Great Alligator. Um, and then we have, there was another title that I'm completely, but oh, The Devil's Honey, Lucio Fulci. Yeah, The Devil's Honey. Um, 4K premiere. So a giant month coming up next for Severin Films. Um, definitely, if, if you're into into this kind of stuff, if you're into Severin, if you're into these, give them all a chance. These are three great releases. Again, Hotspur and The Scavenger I'm going to be revisiting with the commentary. I'm probably going to do another standalone video, um, breaking these down a little bit more. Um, just kind of like sometimes, like I said, that, that, first, that first viewing just doesn't like... You, you don't really garner that appreciation as much. Like, you might enjoy it, but you don't garner that appreciation. So I, I'm always a, a massive fan of revisiting, diving in, listening to the bonus features. I mean, Vinegar Syndrome's Joe Rubin. We have um, great people involved on uh, in these. People who are personally attached. You have um, Temple of Shocks, Chris Paggiali on the uh, Scavengers disc. And then you have um, Bob Crest, former friend. Or a friend and former something weird general manager Tim Lewis. So some great information bound to be on these about these films and the filmmakers involved. So do me a favor, guys, go on over to Instagram, shoot me a follow over there. It's Bearded Film Guy. Please, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, we're quickly approaching a thousand followers. We went from 500 subscribers to 600 subscribers, extremely quick, like in a, in a, in the last couple of weeks. So we've been building some traction. My goal here is to just talk about movies. That's all I want to do. I want to talk about movies with you guys. So make sure to drop a comment down below if you picked up any of these three releases. And I'll catch you all soon.